Assalamu alaikum, Quran Weekly once again. I'm here to share with you uh, actually my favorite ayah, not of the Quran, but of the passage of Ramadan. And the ayah is وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِي إِذَا دَعَانٌ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُ لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُ بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ Man, there's so many beautiful things in this ayah I want to share with you. First of all, it begins وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي Whenever your slave asks you about me. The ayah is to the Prophet ﷺ. And people used to come and ask about Allah. And they used to ask, you know, what's the thing Allah likes the most? How do I pray to Him the best way? Etc, etc, etc. And you know, in this ayah, Allah is not talking to us. He's talking to the Prophet. And, but He doesn't say if the slave comes and asks you. He says when. Because it's like Allah is waiting. You know, if is, if He comes, He comes. But when is, it's like Allah is in anticipation for the slave to wonder about him, the Master. He's anticipating us to come and ask about Him. You know, to inquire about Him, to get to know who He is. That's captured in the word Ida. Then the slave comes and asks you, uh, my slave comes and asks you about me, anni. Usually Allah says anna, about us. Anillah, about Allah. He doesn't say us, He doesn't say Allah, He says me. The word me in the Quran is expressed when Allah highlights particular, unusual amount of closeness. It's, though, it's as though Allah is so pleased, He's so happy with someone who wants to ask about Him that He comes close to Him Himself. He's already taken an act, you know, taken initiative of closeness by saying me. Your slave asked, my, my, my slave asked you about me? Now, I'll, I'll translate what's not in the ayah. Here's what we expect to read. When my slave asks you, my slaves ask you about me, then tell them that I am near. Because the entire conversation is with the Prophet. They're coming and asking the Prophet ﷺ, so they should expect a response from the Prophet. So that Allah is going to teach the Prophet what to tell them. But that's not what happens. What happens is incredible. The, rest, the next words in the ayah are, فَإِنِّي قريب. Then I am near. It's as though they came and asked the Prophet, mm. but the Messenger said وسلم, I will respond myself to them. I'll talk to them myself. إِنِّي قريب. I, then I am near. No doubt about it. I myself am near. In other words, you don't even have to ask the Prophet والسلام, or wait for the Prophet to give you the response. I will give you the response. I'll, I'll engage with you directly. So Allah shows His, His intent, His want of dealing with us directly. SubhanAllah. It's so beautiful. The words we learn from the Prophet وسلم, teach us to connect directly to Allah. That's the essence of our deen. We have a direct relationship with God. Many of, of, of us have messed up in life. We've made a lot of mistakes. None of us are an exception. I'm no exception. You're no exception. We've messed up plenty in life. But that's no excuse for us not to have a direct relationship with Allah. And Allah says, if you just inquire about me, that's enough for me to want to engage with you directly in conversation. Nobody should wonder about Allah. And by the way, that's the spirit of dua, right? Ramadan is the month of dua. When we make dua, we should just deal with Allah directly. Don't just recite words that you've memorized. Know what they mean. And mean them as a conversation with Allah. Like you're talking to Him. And it's totally fine for you to make dua in English. It's okay. Whatever language you know. Talk to Allah in that language. It's nice for you to memorize the du'as, it's great. But the spirit of du'a is that you're talking to Allah. If you know what those du'as mean, that's, that's beautiful. And, and don't just recite them. Don't just say, رَبَّنَا أَتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَا وَقْنَا عَذَابَنَا You're holding your hands, you're re regurgitating the words. But there's no conversation happening between you and Allah. You're missing the point. You asked about Allah and Allah came so near. And then He said something even more beautiful. أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّانِ دَعِي إِذَا دَعَان actually. He said, I respond. I respond immediately. Ujibu actually means I, I respond immediately. And I will respond. It ca carries the present and the future. You know what that does? It gives us hope. You know, you meet some people sometimes, like, Allah is not going to answer my prayers, bro. You don't know. I'm super messed up. Allah says, Ujibu. I do and I will. But you know, not my prayers. He'll answer the prayers of the Imam, the Qari, the guy who's leading Taraweeh, the guy who's got nice recitation, the guy who's much more religious than I am, the girl that wears hijab, etc., etc. Those are the good Muslims. Allah is going to answer them. Allah says, Ujibu da'wata da'i. I will respond to the call of the caller. He didn't say the call of the believer, the call of the Muslim, the call of the one who submits, the call of the righteous, the call of the slave, the call of the worshiper. He didn't use any of those descriptions. He said the call of the caller. Anybody who calls qualifies to be a caller. You don't have to be a special person to be one calling on Allah. So by using the word, the, risk, the call of the caller, Allah opened the invitation to anybody who just wants to engage in the act of, call, of calling on Allah. He didn't put any other criteria in this ayah, except just be a caller. 
And then the additional thing, that's, that just makes me just so in, amazed, in awe of Allah Azza wa Jal, is that, you know, imagine, I, I know it's going to be a hard example to follow, but I'll do my best to make it easy. Imagine you have like, um, you're the CEO of a 500 employee company. And, you know, you meet some secretary, some like, you know, receptionist, some clerk, some intern. You're the CEO. You have to make big decisions. But these employees, you know, maybe you have had a conversation with them once in a while, but you don't remember because you have too many things to deal with. You, you, there's too many bigger things on your mind. So you don't remember them. And if they make a request of you, they send you an email or whatever, it probably gets buried because it's not that priority for you. The more important someone is and the more people under them, the harder it is to get to them and make individual requests, right? It's just difficult. Imagine who's going to be more important and who has more people under him than Allah. And to, for Allah to know each one of us and know our entire personal situation and then to appreciate us so much that he doesn't just say, I appreciate or I respond to the call of a caller, any caller, by saying any caller, we would be anonymous, right? Any, any caller. He said, Ad-da'i, the caller. It's as though Allah knows us personally. You are a the to him, not an a. You're not a caller, you are the caller. That one over there, yeah, I know that one. I know what he's going through. I know what he asked me. It's this personal, Allah is expressing his personal closeness to you so much so that he can distinguish you from the millions and billions of others that have made dua to him at the same time. But he's making you very distinct. So you, none of us gets to think, yeah, when, are we gonna, when is our request going to get processed? Allah didn't hear that. Or Allah is, you know, He's got bigger things. He's got a universe to run. SubhanAllah. Ujibu da'wat ad da'i. Then the next thing. The more important somebody is, the harder it is to make time with them. It's a logical fact. They're busy doing so many things. So if you say, I want a one-on-one -on -one meeting with the CEO, you might have to wait a year, six months, eight months, whatever. You know, you can't just go meet with them. In our society, for example, you want to meet with an important scholar. You can't just walk up and just meet them. You're going to have an appointment, you've got to schedule a time, etc., etc. Because they've got tons of things to do. Allah says, when can you talk to me? إِذَا دَعَان Whenever He calls, night and day, I will be available. Allah is making Himself incredibly available to this person. All of this is in the context of Ramadan, by the way. We are given these motivations in Ramadan. You know what that teaches us? Make, go crazy with dua in Ramadan. Get really, really close to Allah and get used to being close to Allah in Ramadan. Break the barriers between you and Allah in Ramadan. Ida dahan. Then he says, this is the, my, my favorite part of the ayah. Then they should try to respond to me too. They're asking me for things. They're asking me, Ya Allah, make the exam easy. Ya Allah, let that marriage proposal go through. I really like her. I want to marry her. Ya Allah, the house. Let me get an approval on that house. Let the immigration paperwork come through, whatever, whatever people's requests are. People make requests. And Allah says, yes, you made your request, and I will respond whenever. You call, I will respond. But you should try to respond to me too. I have made certain requests of you too. فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُ But He doesn't say, فَلْيُجِيبُ They should respond. He said, they should try to respond. يَسْتَجِيبُ At least make the effort. Allah wants to see effort from you and me that we are actually making effort to respond to what His demands on us are. And He didn't ask us for much. He didn't ask us for much. فَلْيَسْتَجِبُ لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي And when they, when, they, when, they, when they respond to me, then they should believe in me. You know, these words are really important. They're not just extra words in the ayah. In, in, in the wisdom of this ayah, this is of paramount importance. They should believe in me. Why? You would say, obviously, the one making dua to Allah already believes in Him. Why even add this phrase? Because when you ask Allah for something and it doesn't come right away, it starts shattering your faith. So Allah says, keep the faith. Believe. I heard your dua. I know the best way to respond to it. I will respond to it in a way that is better for even you. You couldn't imagine how good my response will be. You may have asked for something that's not good for you. And I will respond with something way better than what you even asked. You may have asked for something, if it came to you right now, it would hurt you. So I held it back from you and I'll give it to you when it's best for you. Allah Azza wa Jal says, just believe, just trust. Believe in me. And finally, he ends the ayah, la'allah. Remember the la'allah, the last two videos we've talked about? La'allah. So that, perhaps, hopefully, this is the, the climax, the end of the surah or the ayah. Yarshudun. So that they may be set straight. They may go the right way. We're learning a very deep secret of Islam here. We're learning people who really, really learn how to make dua, who really connect to Allah in conversation. That is enough for them to be to live live a straight life. 
to live a life of righteousness, to be guided. Because their relationship with Allah, their recognition that Allah is always listening, always ready to listen, He's constantly watching, makes them so aware of Allah that it becomes very difficult for them to live a crooked life, to live a deviant life, to live a misguided life. Dua is the key, you know. And the Prophet ﷺ told us that dua al mukhul ibadah, it's the essence, it's the brains of worship. It's at the heart of worship. The Fatiha is the heart of the Qur'an. And in that heart of the Qur'an, the essence of the Qur'an, half of it is a dua. Half of it is Allah teaching us to ask Him directly. May Allah Azza wa make us people of dua so that we can be set right this Ramadan. And may Allah Azza wa cleanse our hearts so we feel closer and closer and closer to Allah in, in, in this Ramadan. My last point, inshallah ta'ala, let you go. When we make dua, we're talking to Allah, right? When we make dua, we're talking to Allah. But in a conversation, there's supposed to be two ways. You know, the A talks to B and B talks to A. We're talking to Allah. We're also expecting Allah to talk to us. That's why this is the month of the Qur'an. We are conversing with Allah with dua, and Allah is conversing with us through the Qur'an. So the conversation is complete. May Allah Azza wa make us a people of conversation with our Master. Barakallahu li wa lakum. Wassalamu alaikum Qur'an Weekly. Assalamu alaikum Quran Weekly. The Prophet ﷺ told us, Addalu ala al khair kafa'ilihi. The one who points to something good is, gets the same reward as the one who did the good itself. Do me a favor and do all of yourselves a favor and share in the goodness if you benefited from these talks and these videos. Make it a point to share them with friends and family. And get the word out. This is such an awesome project. I really, really appreciate the effort Quran Weekly folks have made. And I pray that Allah blesses them even more and brings even more and more good from them. These kinds of efforts, you know, we, Allah tells us whoever doesn't thank the people hasn't thanked Allah. The, 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 the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ teaches us that. So we should do that. We should appreciate the effort that's being made here. And the best way to appreciate their effort is to help them get more reward and get yourself more reward at the same time by spreading the word, inshaAllah ta'ala. Thank you again. Wassalamu alaikum.